Uh, hi. Today we are going to be releasing two videos because they're, uh, the original versions of these are slightly out of date because they were released in TI, which sadly is still the same patch that we're on right now, but you know, the meta can sometimes change after that, so, um, yeah. Hi. Odds are these last two guides will be for your Patreon eyes only. There are just two heroes I want to touch on before TI7. One is going to be one of the most hotly contested heroes in the game, other than maybe Earthshaker, who I made a guide on last month. And the other will be picked once or twice, it'll be last picked, it'll go mid, and it will destroy. That hero is Ancient Apparition, and let's talk about why. Ancient Apparition five years back was picked only as a mid, but then again back then Lena was only a support and Zeus looked like a fat plumber, and yet nothing about AA changed. The meta shifted, yeah, but he's still a great mid, he scales well with items, is a lane winner and has good base damage and wants that level 6 fast. And the fact is, at least two teams know this going into the tournament. EG is one, maybe when they're up against an Alchemist, Husker, Necro, Dazzle, Slark team they'll spring it and win. Obviously. Those heroes are all top of the chart for heroes AA counters because of their dependency on healing or regen, and it's pretty much that all the way down, but AA can also counter armlet heroes, high armor heroes, and heroes that don't like moving. But on the flip side, for some reason, his biggest counter is Beastmaster, and I don't know why. I straight up do not know why. He's got like a 20% win rate like increase against him. Maybe it's because of split pushing? I don't know, maybe. I guess we'll find out by the end. Here's the normal skill build, and here's the crazy next level mid AA build. The one that Sumail will go. It's crazy next level because it's the same, which is unexpected, I guess. Well, all right, let's be fair. All three spells could be maxed first and justified depending on the circumstances, but for mid and where it's just us versus their solo mid, this build is the build that we go. Cold Feet is a spell I'm sure none of my viewers are experienced with IRL, right? Basically, it's a DOT that stuns after four seconds if the enemy doesn't move 740 units away. As soon as they do, the debuff stops. If they do it instantly, they only take the first tick of damage. If they don't make it, they get a 3.5 second stun. Because it deals damage instantly, it deals max damage after 3 seconds rather than 4, up to 360 damage. When you get the level 25 talent, you can stack cold feet, or cold, cold foot, cold feet on the same target for 14 seconds of consecutive stuns. If you somehow manage to not kill a target in that time, you're probably stunning an effigy. Ice Vortex is a spell that nobody really pays attention to, but it's a 4 second 1500 range vision tool that also slows and reduces magic damage. Chilling Touch is something I've experienced lately. Feels bad, man. In game, it adds up to 80 damage to an ally's next six hits. It's magic damage that doesn't affect towers. It also slows attack speed to compensate so seriously. Stop using it to push towers. Luckily for us, you can left click on the buff icon to remove it from yourself and ice blast. The reason people pick AA. It's the greatest spell in the game. The sheer amount of utility it brings to a team is crazy, and it's got a 45 second cooldown. You guys already know what this does. When you first cast it, it sends a tracer that you can watch on the main map or on the real map that travels at a speed of 1500. It's a global spell, so to traverse the entire map is about 15 seconds. A lot can happen in 15 seconds. You can cast it as a team fight breaks out, and the team fight could be over before it lands. And so the skill of AA comes with the skill of seeing 15 seconds into the future at all times. It's not really something I can teach. I feel like I can do it pretty well, but I've put in 10,000 hours in Dota. It's not worth it. The tracer is invisible to everyone, but the enemy can see its icon on the minimap with true sight, so hitting someone in the fountain would require it to pass over at most seven true sight giving structures, but you'd be surprised how often you can still land it on an enemy with no map awareness. You can do that all the way up to 6k if you're lucky. The distance it travels dictates how big the blast will be, it starts at 275 and maxes at 1000. The tracer also gives vision, and the actual blast leaves a straight line of vision all the way from AA to its blast zone. And of course, once hit, nothing in the game can heal you. Except for Sunder, Phoenix Egg, and Tide Lamps. For some reason. No matter if it's you or Sumail, if either of you are taking AA mid, you will both go Tango's and Altalisman. Pretty much, do as Sumail does, and I'm pretty sure you'll be fine. Uh, you could argue that he's a pretty good player. After that, pick up Midas as fast as you can. You can get Boots or Bottle beforehand if you need it. You can even finish Treads, but sooner or later, get Midas. Usually, AA doesn't get a farming item, and yet needs late game items to either hit level 18 or even level 25 before you can fully say he's maxed out. Now, I usually go Urn and Atos into Ags to make sure Cold Feet gets off, and that I also have enough damage to kill someone with my ult. But Sumail, Sumail goes full carry. Hurricane Pike, Miona, and Daedalus. And here's the thing, it's not bad. It's in fact very good. AA has a pretty good edgy game. In fact, it's the same as Nyx or Ricky, two edgy heroes who need to stack edgy. And with naturally building Treads and Midas, you're working with 55 attack speed more. 
but there, that's the gist of it, really. Octarine Core can be picked up. You can stack five Ether Lenses if you want to see what happens. You can build Refresher and abuse uh, this glitch where if you refresh during Ice Blast Tracer period upon releasing, you fire two Ice Blasts instantly, or you can just finish the game. Obviously, when I started writing the guide, it was to prepare you for what you'll see at TI. And it probably won't be the last thing I mentioned. But then again, maybe it will. I, I, I mean, no one can really say what's going to happen at TI. Ever. It's never worked. But more or less, if we see AA, while the casters and panel go crazy with surprise and hype or theory crafting what'll happen in the next 30 minutes of this game, we can all sit back in unison in the Discord with a smirk and know, no matter what happens, it's gonna be fun. Hi there. Uh, this episode was brought to you by Gore Rocker, Fox You Fucking Luxley, Free Kill, Chris, 1996, Pearson Mewborn, The Adam Sandor Attack Crab, Alahu Dankbar, Lucas Cocoon, Zena Penumbra, Mr. Revolute, Shadow Sweetheart, Jeff Miller, uh, Carbon Bond, Rue Mefleur, Haha, I saw these guides a whole month ago, Michael Robb, Mr. Magic, aka The Tones, Kaiser Wilhelm, Ostovic, Shiva's Guard, Lieutenant Papa, uh, uh, Red, English Breakfast Tea, uh, Pro S, Procrastination Studios, Leonard, Yabas McGee, uh, Soranok, XD, Christian Rudder, Milo Cott, uh, Scar, Apache Mari wearing a headwear neckwear nicknamed as Hatcrafter, Jim Bob the Son of God, Tsunami Shadow, Puneeth P, Rip Mitchell, Exato, Whimsy Shy Magic, Grumman, Emmy Dies Alone, King Gizzard the Shitty Wizard, Herpa Duper, Duda Derp, Swaggity, Booty, Boot Boot D, Tugs McBoat, Slap a Leg a Lamb on the side for it, Redless, Zephrampilica, Kerosene, and 15. And yeah, that's that's it.